right, today I got a 2005 Ford Freestyle that has a problem with the throttle body, and I'm going to go through a little bit of the, the freeze frame data that we that the PCM stores and how we access it on the Ford scan tools and why it might be a good idea if you had this kind of issue to go to the uh, Ford dealer. And uh, also, I'm going to get, after that, I'm going to go into a detailed replacement of it. Now, throttle body is a change model, is no big deal, but on this one, there's cooling passages going through it that are not there on the new throttle bodies. Any of the new throttle bodies do not have the de-icing cooling circuit going through it, so you got to bypass it, and there's certain instructions on that. So I'll be going through that in detail so you guys know where to put those cooling hoses and all that stuff, Torx bags, all that stuff, and uh, how to finish up the job. So at first, I'm going to go through the freeze frame data, how cool it is, all this cool stuff we can see, the data stream going between the two of them, and uh, um, then we're going to get to fixing it. And what I want to show you is uh, some special testing we can do with our scan tool that is not available at the independent shops. A lot of times in electronic throttle buys, they go to do a self-test, and there's no codes in there. They usually do not set codes, almost, almost never, until they have fully failed, and you can barely drive it. Obviously, then you know there's a fault. Um, but before that, it takes a couple hits to actually... Um, set a code in there. In the meantime, the, the, the PCM does flag and save uh, freeze frame data on here for the electronic throttle control. And we have the option right here to go into there and check it out. This is available in the 05 to 2007 Ford Freestyles of 500s because it was such a common issue. They allow us a special little tab on here to go into here. And that'll pull the freeze frame data from the PCM. Now in the 2010, you know, 2009 to 12 uh, fusions and escapes that have a big problem with the um, electronic throttle bodies, they actually have a, the same check on them, but it says, as eh, a pass or not, and it says yes or no. This one's pretty cool. We get to go through and tap the screen real quick. Okay, there we go. This one we have to go through bring it down with me for you and uh, we can actually read all the the actual data stream coming into the PCM there and we can see right here without in flagging any kind of faults that the actual throttle angle that was measured and what it wanted was way off that's over you know that's like 11 degrees and it shouldn't be more than five, ideally under three degrees difference between these two. Therefore, because the throttle plate is off, our load is off, which affects transmission shifting, it affects a lot of different things. So we used to have to go through here and manually go through this data stream and make sure there's no ones in it. And this one has uh, all zeros, so we're good there. But we do see a throttle plate problem as far as having a, a big difference on there. That's definitely a that's a real common fault on electronic throttle bodies. The plate will not be where it's supposed to be. And that can cause surging, no starts, all kinds of stuff. But also in this next page, we got to look through all this data on the zeros in here and make sure there's no ones in here also. And then you can go through and you can see all the stuff that the PCM's always watching. These e-quizzers and all kinds of stuff uh, for the actual th electronic throttle body. And the reason why I do this is because it is electronically controlled and I want to make sure it's not um, going you know, wacko on it and the car can have a runway situation. So, so it's always monitoring multiple angles and uh, areas of the engine to make sure that it's working properly. And this one up here, the most important one right here, same thing. The, the throttle plate measured and desired, you can see again, are way off. And there's a couple of other things on here that don't mean anything to us. But this is how it used to be. We used to have to go through all these, these X's and 1's and zeros all by ourselves and uh, go through here. But it's very, if you know how to read this, it's very good information to catch those intermittent concerns. All right, now changing these out is pretty uh, straightforward, but you'll notice your old one's probably heated just like this, has coolant lines running to it, whereas the, all the new ones that came out, that none of them are heated now. There's not an option for it, so we got to bypass this hose and uh, modify the other one that's coming out the bottom of the actual throttle body, so it connects up to here, and we get rid of all this and the old throttle body. So the first thing we're going to do is unclip the air filter here, pull off our 
mass airflow connector. Make sure you pull back on the red tang. Then I've got to the side, and then there's a hose right here, pulls right out. Whoa. And then this one, push in the tang right there, pull up, put it back like that. And then we're going to unclamp it. It's an 8 millimeter. And I think this one's loose already, actually, uh, from someone messing around with it. Yep comes right off and then this whole thing will come right up and out of here and give us plenty of room to get down in here and uh, replace that all right so like, like I said it's pretty straightforward there's four bolts they actually hold it in there all eight millimeter we're gonna take those out leave all these coolant hoses attached we're gonna pop this off now it's a little vent hose for the transmission make sure it goes back on at the end it's very important for the trans over here is the electrical connector same thing, red tang, pull that down, get it up to the side, and then we're going to start pulling these four bolts out of here. It's going to get quite loud. And what you may notice right here is I put a bunch of rags down under here to catch the coolant. Once we take the lines off of there, so we're going to have to modify a line, then of course take both lines off the throttle body, the old one. Get the last bolt out of here. up and out of the way like so make get access to all these make sure you pull your radiator cap your coolant bottle cap looks something like this on the passenger side pull it all the way off that'll depressurize the system and then we can start pulling these coolant lines off and have minimal loss in the system here Pull them off of here. And I like to pull it off right here at the PCV over here. And that way, the whole old line and throttle body goes off together. It shouldn't be too much coming out of here. It's more in the throttle body. At that point, you can see we got a big long line here. I'm going to dump the coolant out from this line and the throttle body into the rags or your bucket, whatever you got. There's not much in here. And then for now, we're going to keep this line off of here and we're going to bolt the new one on here, the new throttle body. Take your rags, clean your old gasket. It's a good idea to change this out. It's to not totally necessary though. Let's clean it up, clean the inside here. And we'll start bolting our new one in here. Now what I like to do is put dielectric grease. Where's it at? The connector there. This is a connector for the, the throttle position sensor and the motor uh, that's inside the electronic throttle body. I like to put a little bit of dielectric grease on there. XG12 from uh, Motorcraft. Looks something like this. And we'll start bolting our new one in. Get all these bolts threaded by hand. And then we can uh, start tightening them down and do a final torque. The torque on these is 89 inch pounds. There's plenty of room to get a torque wrench in here. And uh, then make sure we torque it down evenly and we don't get no problems with it warping or anything like that. Same thing, crisscross, 89 inch pounds. Okay. Let's get our connector on here right now so we don't forget. Push it in until it fully clicks in, and then push in your red tang. Now at this point, I like to put the air snorkel back on. So everything's sealed up and we uh, don't get any debris in anywhere in the intake system. 
drop anything in there, anything like that. So clamp it down, put it back in over here. Make sure it's fully seated till it stops. And then hold it there till it fully stops and then tighten it. These are very sensitive to any kind of air leaks. Reconnect our mass airflow sensor over here, same as earlier. Your air hose. A little vacuum, I should say. And reconnect your PCV hose, your ventilation hose, make sure it doesn't come off. All right whole air intake systems back together. Now as far as the old hose, this is how it used to be, just like this, right? Where they want you to cut it at is right here. You got the curve, and then it goes straight. You want to cut it right about here. And you can also eye it up on here as far as how far it takes to reach over to uh, this port on here also. And I'm going to cut that off to the side here over the racks so you get no coolant on the engine. And then once it's cut, you can see right there where I cut it. Um, we're going to take this clamp off of here, off the old throttle body. We're going to use that to clamp it on over here just like it did before. There you go. i got more light for you now. Make sure you go underneath this so the hose goes underneath it like that. Just like this. And then we're going to push it on here all the way until it goes at a little stop on there. You'll feel it. can't push it anymore. And then we're just simply going to move this clamp over to the port so we can clamp onto there and seal it up. Something like that right there. And then the last thing you gotta do is uh, make sure you put your cap back on until it clicks a couple times. Something like that. And then just recheck all your work. There's a lot of connections here. And uh, then we can go ahead and start resetting the PCM so we can learn this new throttle body. The one thing I want to point out on here is when you're putting your whole air intake system back in, like I said, make sure it's all clipped down, this is fully seated, your air hoses, PCV hoses, this was routed underneath, a nice curve like that, no kinks in it, and then make sure your clamp is tightened back on there, and this is evenly pushed on all the way around. And what's also important also on these electronic throttle body systems is those three tangs down there in the actual housing here, they stick into the lower housing. You can see three of them there, they're rib tangs right there. Let me see if I can get you closer. And uh, those got, you have to make sure that those are, all three of them are actually in those slots. So we get no airflow um, problems going past the mass airflow sensor because that'll cause all kinds of throttle body issues also. So you really got to make sure this whole system right here is fully sealed and put back together properly. The last thing we got to do to finish this repair is to actually reset the PCM memory. Like I said, it'll learn the new throttle body and its throttle angles from the minimum stop angle and all that. And it'll learn idle values and all kinds of stuff. So it's very important to do this, especially on electronic throttle bodies. I have a whole video on how to reset this yourself at home. And I'll put a link to that down in the description. But I'll be doing it on the scan tool on here, obviously. And then we're going to let it idle for 5 to 10 minutes, no accessories on, and we're going to let it learn a base stock idle. Very important.